the way down over his ears. Some hair is going day, to show. December 8th, he was sentenced in the year 1976. 46 years ago, Virgin Presnell was sentenced to death for the murder. Welcome back to the Death Row and Executions channel, and thank you for watching. I'm Paco Rivera. Okay, so in the last video I did, I said that John Hansen was the last person scheduled to be executed in the United States this year. However, after that video was completed, I learned that the state of Idaho had just announced that they've added a death row inmate to be executed this month, that being 66-year-old Gerald Ross Pizzuto. And that execution is scheduled to take place on the same day as John Hansen in the state of Oklahoma. But as of today, there is still no word on whether the federal government will transfer Hansen to Oklahoma. I'll keep you updated on that. Gerald Pizzuto, as I said, is scheduled to be executed in Idaho this month on December 15th. Pizzuto's doctors have said that this death row inmate is terminally ill with advanced late stage cancer of the bladder, meaning he doesn't have much longer to live. Idaho hasn't executed anyone since 2012, 10 years ago. Since 1976, 1976, they have only executed three death row inmates. During that time, Texas has executed over 500. And now Idaho suddenly announced an upcoming execution for an inmate who is going to die soon anyway. What do you think about that? Gerald Pizzuto has been locked up since 1985, 37 years. And now there's a rush by Idaho to execute him. There's just one problem, though. Uh, Idaho's Department of Corrections is also reporting that they don't have the necessary chemicals or drugs to carry out an execution, and they don't know if they will have it by December 15th. Delbert Dean Herndon, who was 35 years old and living in Nebraska, had been staying in Morrising, Idaho with his uncle, who happens to have the same first name he does, Delbert. Also at the home was the uncle's wife, 58-year-old Berta Herndon. On the 24th of July, 1985, Berta and her husband's nephew, Delbert, who is known simply as Del, left the town of Marsing and traveled to a camping ground in the Ruby Meadows region of Idaho, where Berta and her husband have a cabin. They had traveled there on a prospecting mission where the two of them would be mining for gold. To be honest, I didn't know until I started researching this case that digging for gold was still a thing in the United States, but apparently it's still going on, though mostly as a recreational activity, it seems. Gerald Ross Pizzuto was born in 1956. He is originally from Orland, California. By the year 1975, when Pizzuto was 19 years old, he had settled in Michigan, and that year he kidnapped and raped a woman at gunpoint. Pizzuto was convicted and served nine years in prison and was released on parole in 1984. But he then violated his parole by fleeing the state of Michigan and going to Seattle, Washington. While in Seattle, he became the main suspect in two homicides that occurred there one week apart of each other in March of 1985. Robbery had been declared the motive in both killings. At some point, Bizzuto fled from being captured in Seattle and met up with friends he had known from his hometown in Orland, California. 26-year-old William Odom and Odom's 19-year-old wife, Lene. The young couple also had two young children, two boys. Also joining in with the group from Orland was a man named James Rice. Now, what starts to get a bit confusing is how Pizzuto had convinced everyone that he is now going by the name Jerry Gilbertson, and that is how they then knew him. I'll discuss the situation with the name change later. The group made plans for a trip to Idaho to hunt 
for gold. So the four adults and two young boys all got in William Odom's pickup truck and off they went to Idaho to get that gold in the ground or rivers or wherever they might find it. They arrived at the Ruby Meadows campground in Idaho near the town of McCall and rented a trailer home from a man named Roger Edwards who also owns Edwards Trailer Park. The trailer home was not far from the cabin where Berta Herndon and her nephew, Dell were staying. It was now July 25th, and at some point, the three men, Pizzuto, Rice, and Odom, gave up on the idea of finding any gold and decided to try their luck at robbing other people on the campground. Over by a pond, the men spotted some men fishing from a bridge, and together they decided that they were going to rob them. It is unlikely the fishermen would be allowed to live. However, as they were making their move, Berta Herndon and her nephew Dell were driving by and a brief exchange of words actually took place between all of them. That encounter resulted in the three men aborting their plans to rob the fishermen, as there were now witnesses who had seen them there. Later that day, Gerald Pizzuto grabbed his 22 caliber rifle and went for a walk. He approached the cabin where Berta Herndon and Del Herndon were staying. He pointed his rifle at them and went inside. He then proceeded to tie up the woman and her nephew with shoelaces and pocketed what was later described as a wad of $100 bills that he stole from them. It was about $1,000. He also took a pair of boots from Del. Pizzuto then got a hold of a hammer and bashed the heads of both Berta and Dell until he was sure that they were dead. Pizzuto's buddies William Odom and James Rice left their rented trailer nearby and went looking for Pizzuto. They spotted him outside the cabin where the crime had taken place. He was holding a bloody hammer and told his friends what he had done and that he got a wad of $100 bills and a pair of boots out of it. James Rice would later tell authorities that he heard groaning sounds coming from inside the cabin. He took the rifle from Pizzuto and went inside. He'd said that the man and woman were on the floor tied up and there was a lot of blood coming from their heads. James Rice said that the woman was surely dead, but the man's legs were shaking. He said that the only reason he shot the man between the eyes with that rifle was to, quote, take him out of his misery, unquote. Pizzuto, Rice, and Odom returned to their trailer and divided up the money. Pizzuto also gave the 19-year-old wife, Lene Odom, a $100 bill. The three men later returned to the cabin, carried the two bodies into the woods, and buried them in shallow graves. They then returned to the cabin and removed other possessions of the Herndons, such as wedding rings and other jewelry, a camera, and some other stuff, and the keys to the vehicle that the Herndons were driving. After that, they all left out of Ruby Meadows. William Odom and his wife and children left in their pickup truck. Gerald Pizzuto and James Rice left in the now stolen pickup truck belonging to the Herndons. They all later ended up at a motel for several days before splitting up and everybody going their own way. Before doing so, they took lots of pictures of each other using the camera stolen from the Herndon's cabin. James Rice got on a bus and went back to Orland, California. And upon arriving, he suddenly, out of the blue, walked into the police station and reported the murders back in Idaho. All the names of everyone involved and every detail of what had happened. Orland police contacted authorities in Idaho County. Odom and his wife, Lene, were captured first, and both were arrested. Their two little boys were taken into temporary foster care by the state. Police continued their search for Gerald Pizzuto, but they had Pizzuto's name as Jerry Gilbertson instead of Gerald Pizzuto, and that threw them off for a while. 
Pizzuto eventually ended up at his sister's home in the state of Montana. In August, a month after the crimes, he was tracked down and captured in Great Falls, Montana, and held on arrest warrants from both the states of Washington for the murders in Seattle and Idaho for the murders in Ruby Meadows. The state of Washington agreed to allow Montana to extradite Pizzuto to the custody of Idaho, and he was tried there first. And, as we know, on May 23, 1986, he was sentenced to death. In 1987, he was transported to Washington to face separate trials there for the two murders and was found guilty twice, and both times sentenced to life. He was later transported back to the custody of Idaho and back to to death row. James Rice would accept the plea deal and testified for the prosecution against Pizzuto. He was sentenced to life in prison, but was released after serving 12 years. William Odom pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter and grand theft and was released after 10 years. His wife, Lene Odom, who was arrested and held initially by police in Idaho County, was charged with grand theft for accepting part of the stolen money, but that charge was later dropped and she didn't serve any time. In December of last year, Governor Brad Little of Idaho rejected clemency for Gerald Pizzuto with the following words. Pizzuto was convicted of robbery and four grisly murders, all committed within a year after his release from prison in Michigan for rape. He killed Rita Drury, a grandmother, after binding her hands and feet, brutally assaulting her, and violating her in a disgusting and humiliating manner. He fatally shot John Ray Jones in the face at near point-blank range. Those are the crimes that happened in Seattle. At Ruby Meadows in Idaho, Pizzuto bound Berta and Dell gruesomely bludgeoned their heads repeatedly and concealed their bodies in a shallow grave. But for the brave Idaho jury and devoted law enforcement, Pizzuto would have certainly left other countless victims in his wake. Please remember to subscribe for more Death Row and upcoming execution stories. I'm Paco Rivera. Bye for now. Thank you.